Hey there guys, this is Andrew with Tech Engineered and today we're going to be doing a review of the Saima X5C drone because I am sure that many of you are wanting to get into quadcopter flying but really aren't wanting to spend a thousand dollars on a drone so this is a great budget option so let's talk about it. So the Saima X5C drone comes in at about $60 last time I checked on Amazon. I will have the link down to it in the description below. And really it comes with all the stuff that you will need, a controller, it comes with, you know, the blade guards and stuff like that. It does come with a camera, however, I would recommend never using the camera because it's like a 200p camera and it just kind of sucks. Um, yeah, just don't use it. This isn't a photography drone. You will have to spend money to get a photography drone. But if you're wanting to learn the mechanics of flying, maybe practice before buying a drone for photography to get your drone movements pretty steady, this is a very good option. The drone flies very well. Um, you do have to trim it yourself. It doesn't auto trim itself or anything like that. It doesn't have any return to home features. It is a very hands-on experience. But if you've had some experience with some RC helicopters and stuff like that, it is very easy to pick up because it really has only three axes of trim. It has rotational, front, back, and side to side. So, yeah, you still have to manually trim it yourself, which means you have to, like, level it out and make sure that it's totally flat and make small adjustments to it if you didn't know what trim was. The controller is very nice. It is nice and big. I have large hands, so sometimes little like RC controllers feel pretty small in my hands, but this is a big controller. It's got a super nice range on the antenna, and it does take batteries. I don't know how many. Hold on, let me check and see how many batteries it takes. <clears throat> it takes four AA batteries, but I haven't actually had it go dead on me. I've been using it for a very long time. And yeah, it, those batteries will last you a while. The controller doesn't use that much power. It does have all the controls for the camera on the controller, and it also has a beginner mode slash expert mode. So if you are beginning out, just leave it in beginner mode. And basically what it does is it regulates you so that you can't make any altitude detrimental movements when it comes to the directional movement. So if I'm flying forward, I can push the forward stick all the way forward and not lose altitude. It'll maintain altitude even at full throttle. Now in expert mode, it'll allow you to make detrimental movements um, by if I press forward, it'll go actually down because it'll go forward so far that it'll go down, which allows you to make a lot of faster maneuvers and stuff like that. But if you're a beginner and you accidentally push it too far, you could plunge your drone into the ground basically. Another good thing about this drone, at least for people in the US, I'm not sure about foreign laws, it is below one pound or whatever the limit is to where you wouldn't have to register it. So you can get this drone and fly it and not have to worry about registering the drone, which is pretty nice because dealing with all that paperwork and stuff is kind of a pain in the butt. If you do get a bigger drone, you will most likely have to register the drone. And yeah, good luck with that. A lot of times when people start out flying a drone, they will break the drone, which is why you want to buy a cheap one. But also this cheaper drone, you can buy spare parts kits with it, which is what I would recommend doing right off the bat. When you order this drone, I would go ahead and order a spare parts kit, which I will have a link to one down in the description below. So yeah, if you do break something on it, you can easily replace it. This drone is easily self-serviceable. You can take it apart and replace whatever's in it pretty darn easily, even if you don't have any mechanical experience or experience of any kind. So definitely pick up that spare parts kit just in case you break something. Something that I would like to see changed on this drone, which I could change it technically, is that the forward LEDs are orange and the rear LEDs are green. And those are meant to tell you kind of like where it's facing in the air whenever you're looking at it. But it just kind of makes sense to have the green ones forward. I don't know, I'm maybe I'm weird. But I guess I could change that by changing out these little like colored covers over the LEDs. But I don't really want to do that because I looked at it and it looks... A little bit harder to do that and yeah but that's something that I would recommend that they change on future drones is putting the green ones on the front just because that's kind of that kind of makes more sense it took me a while to get used to that because my brain was automatically thinking oh the green needs to go in the forward direction but it doesn't because then you'll be flying backwards something to keep in mind when flying this drone is that it does not handle wind very well especially if you have it in the most weighed down configuration. If you want to fly it in the wind, I would recommend taking the blade guards off, which if you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't do. 
and you probably shouldn't be flying it in the wind. And you can also take the landing gear off and just have it land on these shorter pieces of landing gear on the bottoms of the arms of the drone. So take those off just so that there isn't as much for the wind to catch on and it makes the drone a lot lighter too which will give you more battery life. And I did experiment with this because I didn't know if having all the stuff on it making it heavier would be better in the wind or taking all the stuff off of it and making it more aerodynamic would be better and I did find out that making it more aerodynamic is the better option. So if it is a bit windy out definitely take all the equipment off of the drone and fly it just kind of bare bones and you'll have a much better experience. And I generally fly it just bare bones like this. I even took the battery door off the drone just so that it's even lighter and I just wrapped a little piece of tape around the center bar that holds the battery in just so that the battery will stay in and then the battery plugs in here which kind of holds it into the battery compartment like so. So by removing the battery door I kind of lessen the weight so the battery will last longer. Basically that's your main concern because it doesn't have that big of a battery. You can buy aftermarket batteries that have a bit more capacity but the little battery they give you really doesn't have that big of a capacity. It's only a 500 milliamp hour battery. So yeah, keep that in mind and fly it with the least amount of gear that you can. I would recommend keeping the blade guards on if you are a beginner because you are very likely to run it into something and those will help protect the thing that you run it into and the drone. So leave those on there, but you can definitely take off the tall landing gear and the camera and the battery door and stuff to limit your weight. And once you get comfortable with the drone, take off the blade guards. And the drone does come with a little screwdriver so that you can modify it and stuff and all the screws fit that standard size screwdriver that they give you. Um, I Actually, I'm not sure if it came with the drone itself or the repair kit. Either way, you should definitely pick up the repair kit so if it's in there you'll have it. And this is what the repair kit looks like. It comes with extra landing gear, uh, prop guards, props, extra motors, it comes with extra little gear assemblies for the ends of the arms of the drone that actually run the props and yeah it's a very good thing to pick up and I like it a lot. This is the camera it is very crappy and do not use it but it does have a micro SD card that fits into the back it comes with a 4 gig card and yeah basically I never use the camera I just leave it in the bag with the parts kit. And without further ado, let's take this little drone outside and see how it flies. Okay guys, we are outside now and we're going to check out the uh, flying performance of this drone. I'm sorry if there's a lot of wind noise, I do have a wind filter on this microphone, but this isn't the best microphone, this is only a Rode Video Mic Go, this is what I use to shoot on the go, and I'm sorry if the lighting is kind of bad right now because I'm planning on shooting in this direction. And the sun is behind me right now shooting into the camera, so hopefully you guys can see me because I honestly can't hardly see the screen on the camera right now, but let's get started. Okay, so pairing up the drone is fairly easy. The drone's on the ground right now, and I believe we need to turn it on. Nope, I turned it on already. And now we're just going to turn on the controller, and we are simply going to push the throttle, which is the left stick, all the way up, and then back down. And it should have paired the drone, so then we're just going to tap the throttle, and yes, indeed, we are paired. So now, what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that's trimmed out by giving it a little bit of throttle just until it's hovering and it looks like it's hovering back quite a bit so we're going to push the forward trim up still coming back that's also the direction of the wind we're just going to bottom that out and now we're going to take that So we're back from flying, and I do apologize, I wanted to get a lot more flying shots, but it was extraordinarily windy today. We've been having wind gusts of up to like 40 miles per hour, and I thought they were over, but I get out there and they start up again, so I did get some flying shots that you just saw, 
and that was basically it. I wish I could have tested the range on the antenna, but that just wasn't going to happen. At one point, the drone just kind of, I tried to land it, but as soon as it landed, it just got taken away, and I had to chase after it into the woods, and yeah, that was just kind of bad. Um, but yeah, it is a very good drone, a very long range. I've gotten it up to like 200 feet of altitude. It doesn't handle wind that well, so picking a nice calm day is pretty good. It can handle some light wind, but like gale conditions like we have right here now is not the best for it. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational and maybe you're wanting to get into drone flying so you're gonna pick up this quadcopter. And yeah, I definitely would recommend it. I've used it for about a year now and I love it. So again, links to the quadcopter and the repair kit down in the description below. Go check those out and yeah. If you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like on it. If you like the content on this channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you have advice for future content that I can make, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video.